All right, so I'm going to run down a couple new stories that we heard today um, as far as the rumor mill goes, and we'll see any if any of these transpire and come to be anything. First, let's talk about the Utah Jazz and their potential of maybe getting Danny Ainge in their front office. Um, recently, you may have heard that the Jazz, it's hard to say if you want to like, you know, degrade the whole thing, but like they essentially told Dennis Lindsay, Hey, you're no longer going to have the same role. You're going to have a different role. You're going to be an advisory dude for the team, which, you know, to me sounds like they kind of kicked him out and said, you know, we need a little different voice in here. Um, apparently there had been some issues, um, between Dennis Lindsay and Ryan, um, and, uh, Quinn Snyder, I should say of the Utah jazz and coach and GM front office. If they don't really agree, that definitely is something that needs to, uh, be addressed and they addressed it in this way. And it's going to be really interesting to see what happens after this. Um, Apparently, again, long, long. The the report is saying that there was long running disconnect between Lindsay and Quinn Snyder, and that apparently had the relationship had deteriorated um, over the years. And even though that Lindsay was the one who kind of hired <laughs> Quinn Snyder, um, so there was a report. One source says that Quinn won, basically. So I, again, you kind of ownership may have said, "Hey, we're gonna." side with Quinn Snyder on this one and how this relates to Danny Ainge. Well, apparently the um, jazz have already met with Danny Ainge. Um, Ports say that the Ainge met with the jazz last week and is a candidate to join their front office. Um, It is being, and again, similar considered for an advisory role, but maybe, um, I mean, I think it might be something more. Justin Zanuck ultimately for the jazz is the primary decision maker in Utah. And, um, this is, um, an interesting turn of events here for the jazz as you kind of didn't really see that. All right, let's bump over to James Wiseman. There's a report now saying that there's this widespread expectation now that's being used. And it is being said that James Wiseman will likely be moved, um, by the warriors. Um, according to John Hollinger at the athletic, um, it says that there is, a strong likelihood that the Warriors are going to use that number seven pick that they have along with Wiseman to try to trade and get another and get another um, star in the name that comes up is potentially Pascal Siakam. So someone to look out for. And yeah, I don't, you know, kind of response to this is just kind of, you know, I feel bad for Wiseman. I mean, he plays the three games in college has the whole, um, eligibility issue in Memphis comes to the NBA. It seems kind of like an ideal fit for him to be the guy who fits the positional need for this, for the warriors. And he's their new center of the future and you know, all these different types of things. And it just seems like the warriors are kind of a team that says, Hey, we're going to, we're going to go ahead and play. We're going to go ahead and play, you know, Looney and other guys at the center position and basically say that uh, Wiseman still needs to kind of mature as a defender. And I, again, it probably is going to, he's a project. And I think that was clear, especially on the defensive end. A lot of people are saying, you know, he looks, he looked lost out there last season. And yeah, I, I think that if you can maybe salvage something um, from the Wiseman pick, because it just, it's not that he's a bad player. It's just that he needs to really, he really needs to kind of become an NBA player. He doesn't look ready to play in the NBA right now. And that's why, you know, there wasn't a situation where the, the, the the Warriors wanted to set anything up for him to have more minutes. And so when that's the case, I think it's going to be the case for a lot of these teams in the NBA that are going to say, we're going to, you know, kind of punt on the situation of, of taking a young prospect and, will take veterans, even if they're like kind of a strong role playing veterans. So um, Wiseman potentially out of Golden State. Uh, maybe we'll make a trade video on that. Um, for them to get Pascal Siakam just kind of off the top of my head, he has kind of a bigger deal, so I'm not quite sure how that would work. Is there a way that they could maybe use Wiseman and Ubre in a sign-in trade? I, again, I would have to look over that, but I can't imagine them trying to give away Curry 
um, Draymond or or Clay. I mean, you got to believe that Siakam's got to be the fourth piece in in the sense, the fourth out of those four um, to to join the Warriors. So anyway, we'll uh, we'll we'll keep our eye on that, but uh, beware of James Wiseman. Um, Lloyd Pierce, keeping it with the Warriors, um, apparently is looking to join the Warriors. There there's a report saying that um, that the with the loss of um, Jaron Collins from this Warriors coaching staff that they might hire Lloyd Pierce, who had recently been the coach of the Atlanta Hawks to begin this season and now is looking for a job. And, and so maybe if he lands in Golden State, be a good situation for them. Um, Pierce is, uh, you know, obviously the weird situation that happened with him down in Atlanta was a little uh, difficult uh, didn't seem like he vibed with the players that well, especially their star player. So for them to um, essentially go back and uh, get a guy that is familiar to them, because again, the Atlanta front office knows Lloyd Pierce, and if they were in, because they had come from Golden State, a majority of them had come from Golden State, and so the front office is kind of a, built with warriors. warriors um, Ex Warriors front office people, and so for them, it maybe means that they, as an organization, were trying to, or are trying to kind of get their guy. So I think it's a good pickup if they can get him. Again, we'll see if he ever coaches in the NBA as a head coach. I doubt that because of you know when when you have a souring relationship with the players, it's probably not the best look for future employment with that. All right, we'll finish on this. Gary Trent expected to. Um, be extended by the Raptors and we will see kind of what that means for them moving forward. Look, they traded um, Norman Powell uh, along with um, and they also acquired Rodney Hood in this deal that led Trent to Toronto. Um, personally, my thoughts on Trent are just that he's nice. I think he's kind of an off the bench kind of a player. Um, he doesn't really pass the ball a lot and get much assists. He's kind of a score first. He's not the greatest of defenders. Um, he's not really the most efficient of players, but I, I think if you have a role for him, uh, maybe coach him up a little bit more in Toronto that you could potentially land a, a very solid um, a bench piece for, um, you know, for yourself. And we'll see how, how big, big the deal would be. Um, ultimately, I, I think that's a solid move. Again, if you were to basically lose, Norman Powell and get nothing. I think that would be just a really weird trade for the Raptors to make um, at the deadline, like they did. And um, yeah, so again, he'll he'll enter restricted free agency, and um, we'll kind of just see what happens. I don't know if anyone will come paying for him, but it does sound like the Raptors intend on um, re-signing Gary Trent. Well, that is it for today's rundown of the rumors. Um, if you want to hear more. Um, NBA content from me, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Uh, we'll be doing a lot more things here with the channel, doing some draft coverage and kind of previewing the offseason for each team. I'll then a lot more and obviously talking about the finals when they come. Um, anyway, feel free to subscribe, watch another video here, and enjoy your day.